Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast, and I'm here downtown Paducah. That's right. Uh, I'm here with like an old friend, yeah, a buddy that, uh, gosh, I just got a lot of uh, a lot of regard for. And watching you do your thing, man, is so cool. And we get to kind of parallel almost as we're uh, as we're living our dream, I guess you'd say. But sure. introduce yourself, man. Like, kind of let the audience know who you are, what you do. Yeah, yeah. Lights well, out. Hang on, we got to wave our arms. There it goes, there it goes. We're good. All right. Well, as soon as you got ready to introduce yourself, yeah. it's like, boom. Dang it. Um, yeah, so, so I'm Dylan Street. Um, gosh, man, long story to my life. But ultimately, whenever, um, you know, I got into business, uh, you know, I, I started out really this web series. I was a logger, started this web series, and then um, it was it was called Hashtag Wake Up Metropolis, and it was ultimately just uh, um, kind of raise awareness to, man, that's frustrating. That's like, that's like real. Like, Bro, we were, it was doing good the whole time. It was. Do you, um, oh, there it is. Does it, I don't oh, know. That's all good. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. just need some like something to throw every now. Yeah. And then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So so hashtag Wake Up Metropolis was um, uh, made up of two seasons, eight episodes a season, um, and it was really just to bring. I wanted to impact and bring the passion out of people because Metropolis is also known as Methopolis, and just mm-hmm. you know we just mm-hmm. don't have the best look. We've got the Superman statue. Um, I'm gonna wave again. <laughs> here we go. All right. There we go. Um, just don't have the best look. So I started that, and then just through that process, I had to learn, you know, video editing and different things. So okay. went and bought a camera, um, one from a pawn shop. I think it was like 120 140 bucks. Still got it to this day. Nice. Often use it just for fun. Um, but, yeah, so, so I started learning that, and then um, I went and did a – free video for somebody it was actually the zone uh, about a month after they opened which is a local gym in metropolis that's legit isn't it? it it is it is yeah man i don't know what it, what we want to do about it i can make a phone call and probably fix it um like it's so weird because like little movements it's motion activated yeah little movements actually here's, like here's what we're gonna do i got it let's see if this works this will be funny if he hears himself on this podcast. On the podcast? Yeah. <laughs> this is what I love about, like, real life. Hey, Christian. What's up? Hey, man, I got a question. Um, I'm doing a, uh, in the middle, actually, of a podcast here in the studio room, and the, you know, the soft box, the big one, is, like, motion activated. How do I keep it on full time? Gotcha. Um, do you see the remote sitting around anywhere? Uh, I can certainly look for it real quick. Uh, I thought it was on the big round table, but it's it looks like normal a little LED plug remote. Okay. Okay. Uh, if if you hit the on button, it's going to turn it off. Yeah. Hit it again, and it'll come back on. Okay, and I just want you to know, um, I want you to tap into the next Shed Geek podcast, and you'll be on there. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, Chris. We'll see you, buddy. That's, that's pretty good. We pretty actually good. We, like I've called someone live in the podcast before, so. Let's see what's up. Like we're, we don't want to be in the dark. We want we want everybody to see our pretty face, right? You're gonna be looking everywhere for that remote. You realize that? Nice. On all the time. And I'm keeping, yeah, I'm keeping this. Place. Let there be light. <laughs> all right. So, we're in there. Okay. So you're, you're, you're doing, uh, you're doing this. Uh, I remember this. I remember watching Wake Up Metropolis. Yeah. And, and being like, who is this guy? You yeah. know, like, uh, and, and at the same time, and we'll kind of talk about that. I mean, you've got like some, some, uh, background in, in helping with, addiction and things like yeah. that that kind of connected us but so you bought this camera you're like i'm gonna give this a shot 
you still yeah. got it. Go from there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, ultimately, I did this free video just for fun for the zone, um, which is, yeah, it's a 24-7 fitness place in Metropolis. And I sent it to him, and he was like, hey, I'll give you 200 bucks. And I was like, oh, awesome. So then I somehow got linked up. Oh, actually, I brought Stuart Weisenberger, Farmer Real Estate. Okay. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, we got to know each other somehow, and I brought him on the Stuart web series. Stuart bought a building for me. Did he? Uh, he bought a shed for a, me. A portable building? <laughs> for real. Let's go. <laughs> That's what's up, Stu. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but Stu's awesome, man. He's just uh, involved in our community. But um, we we got linked up, and then the the old Banterra building, um, yeah, when yeah. it went for sale, or no, 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 after the city of Metropolis was done using it, I believe, he put it up for sale. Um, and it was $1.9 million. He asked me to do a video, and I was like, he didn't, I didn't know how to price myself, like $250. And he's like, how about I'll give you seven fifty and then 2.5% of the sale price? And I was like, when yeah. it sells, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll do absolutely. That. I, I do want you to know that it did sell, but I'm too scared to ask him for the 2.5%. <laughs> because, man, this is like seven, I don't know, not seven, maybe four or five years ago. So, yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, but beyond that, I just uh, I, I started a you know a small company at the time, Dillon Street Cinema, and it was literally just like freelance videography, um, and it just kind of grew and grew and grew. Um, at some point, um, I think really I was logging at this time, and then whenever I started consistently making quite a bit more money each week off doing a video than I was of giving 50 hours of my life logging at $14 and 50 cents an hour. I think it was like the fourth consecutive week I had just, you know, made an exponential amount more than I did from my actual logging check. Um, I was like, yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to jump out. And, uh, yeah. And so you had just put the Summit Portable Buildings building out there um, by, oh, the, by interstate. the interstate. That's yeah. right. And uh, you had that office space, and then we agreed on something. Uh, yeah, we actually, I think, did the video first or during? Um, I'm not sure. It was during. I, I think it was during. So we did. Uh, I've shared it on. Uh, I don't remember. I shared it on the Shed Geek Podcast sure. Facebook page for sure. Yeah. We need to throw that up on, like, the, the yeah. YouTube channel or whatever for, for Shed Geek. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, basically, we sat down and hashed out this plan, right, to – how do you sell sheds without trying to sell sheds? Like maybe not just trying to be the guy that comes down here and says, come on down to the lot for, yeah. you know, forty nine yeah. ninety nine. you know, yeah. like it's tell a story yeah. about what's behind a shed. And this, this actually became like a, yeah. um, it was a really cool video. Yes. It got tons and tons of like views. Yeah. And then like me and you, so, so we've got this office space just to kind of clarify. So like me and Dylan knew each other before that through some recovery efforts. Yep. Right. Teen we're, challenge. We're, yeah. We were working with like teen challenge and mm -hmm. uh, still to this day, you know, trying to uh, shed a light on, you know, guys who are kind of lost in that lifestyle, yep. help them out, let dads be dads, moms be moms, right. Sure. Family, bring the family together. And that's just sort of a, something that we're passionate yeah. about is helping folks. But we, we knew each other through this and I think you did a video and then there was just, I don't remember there was, it's like a hundred mile an hour. There's stuff yeah. happening. Yeah. And then uh, when we had that office space, man, you came in and just like, just like uh, encouraged us. You were like a hundred mile an hour yourself all the time. Yeah. And you're, you're getting ready to jump out on faith, living your dream saying, yeah. Hey, I want to try and do this. Yeah. And we did, we did that video. And I remember getting a phone call one day out of nowhere from, uh, from AJ Keating. Yeah. At LP uh, Smart. At LP. Yeah. Yeah. He was, uh, he was doing the, uh, the marketing and Rachel Hudson since taken over for them. But, uh, AJ says, bro, uh, who did this video? Y'all made our marketing. Some girls in our marketing cry, cry, yes. you know, <laughs> and it was like, Oh, well, we didn't mean to do that. And he's like, no, in a good way. And yeah. he, he actually said, uh, he said, Hey man, uh, we want to make this a reality. So it was a video about somebody looking to buy a, a shed and yeah. turn it into a, a food pantry. Yeah. So the guy ends up saying, find a spot. And uh, LP is going to pay for a shed and let's put it in a community yeah. that needs it. And some, it's going to build it. Yeah. And it's still there to this day. It's still there. Karnak, Illinois. Karnak, Illinois. Still can't see my logo at the bottom right hand <laughs> corner every time I drive by. <laughs> it's got, I took a picture of it recently. It's got uh, the food pantry on the side. It's got LP and yeah. Dylan Street Cinema and it's got Summit, Summit. on there. And mm -hmm. uh, Shawnee Development, which is the county I grew up in. So mm -hmm. it was really cool. To be able to pick the spot, you know, that like something that we did together came back to benefit 
the the people that raised me, the, sure. the county that raised me, you know. Yep. So, um, and that was a cool relationship to get to know them. We went yep. out, did a news press, you know, give the shed away, did some really cool yep. stuff. Uh, and they were just really super about sure. about everything. Yeah, they ended up hiring me to shoot uh, that day. Uh, whenever I guess it was opening day of the um, uh, food pantry. Yeah, we shot some stuff, and they have a whole team of editors that yeah. kind of edited together. But yeah, that was just I don't know. It was just surreal. And man, when I think back, you know, we showed just one way that a shed could be used. Like, could we have not have done a whole series sure. on that? You For know. Sure. And I mean, I can absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I remember the day and I would say that this is like, I don't know if it, I don't know if you'd call it small town, small town virality, but um, dude, I go look at that video and it's got thousands and thousands of views and hundreds of comments and people will comment on every year around the time that we released it. I start getting notifications again and people are like this popped up in my memories yep. and or someone shared it and I cried all over again, bro. It yep. still is in rotation to this day. Dude, I go by there to, to my in-laws <laughs> yeah. like twice a week, probably. My mom was down there. Sure. Like my in-laws lived. Down. So when I go down there once, twice a week. I pass by that every time. It brings me some kind of joy to just yeah. be like, we're sitting in a huddle house, dude. And that's just, hey, how do you sell a shed without selling a shed? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Boom. There it was. Yeah. It, it, it showed up. So there's there's obviously, there's tons more opportunity. So anyway, I will post the like, we'll post like, a, I've got like a weekly newsletter that goes out with sure. a video link in there for people to see sure. if they're interested in seeing it. Uh, that's the kind of quality work that you do, man. You took a vision mm. and- Ran with it, bro. Like yeah. you did, you did an amazing job. You did a good job. There's a lot of bros on this one between me yeah. and you. It's yeah. There's gonna be a lot of bro. bro. They're gonna be like, what? What got into him? Yeah. But I uh, can't help it. Your 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 uh, energy is sort of infectious. So good stuff. Uh, um. So that's how we we got to know it. But man, you sold some sheds. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you ended up buying a shed to, yeah. to operate your uh, yeah some of your through some out of um, and and then use Dave used uh, smart pay Dave yeah. yeah absolutely you did you did some work for him too yeah, like yeah. you flew up and did some work so you're familiar yeah. and you've you've kind of watched this journey that I've I been on back yeah. so I've watched you and and you've uh, watched me and and we've stayed connected through that yeah and um, and it seems like it's coming back around. I've just got this odd connection of the shed life just is always watching me. You know, it's just <laughs> so ever present as I go through life. You know, it's interesting. Hey guys, this is the Shed Geek, and I'm here to tell you about the latest in financial innovation to hit the shed industry. It's a program called Backyard Finance. Everywhere I go, shed manufacturers and shed sellers are always asking, how can I get a better payment option for my customer? At Backyard Finance, they're making this a reality. You might be asking, how do I sign up? Simple, just go to Backyard Finance, click on the Get Started Now button, and create an account. After that, you'll have 200 plus banks competing to give your customer the best financial terms possible. With Backyard Finance, you can service your customers two ways, direct to customer lending or direct to merchant lending. With direct to merchant lending, simply fill out an application It takes about two to four weeks to process that application, but it'll allow you a variety of financing options to make you a more competitive retailer. With FICO scores as low as 500, 600, or 700 plus, your customers will receive financing options with APRs as low as 2.99% or as high as 29.99%. Credit applications are approved in just 15 to 45 seconds. To know more, contact Backyard Finance at 833-692-2286 or email info at backyardfinance.com today. Backyard Finance, funding backyard dreams. Well, you know there's so much around here. Some of your buddies that are involved in uh, working in the shed industry, there's a lot of corporate headquarters around here. So many. Yeah. So many. You're you're within walking distance to easy easy portables. Yeah. Corporate office. I mean, Graceland's corporates around. Mm-hmm. Dirksen, Cook. I yep. mean, there's you know, Premier's yep. not too far away. There's so much, so much around here. So you find yourself crossing paths with people, maybe in like a tech space, sure, that work in that capacity, Absolutely. digital marketing or or 
yeah. something. Yeah, I've got a buddy that did the marketing for EZ. You know, he, he did a while uh, for uh, another marketing company. It's just, I don't know, man. It's just. Uh, it finds its way back to you, it doesn't does. it? It really yeah. does, yeah. I posted something this morning and said, if it's your calling, it'll keep calling you. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know if the shed industry is your calling, but you yeah. do have something to offer sure. uh, to the shed industry. So so tell me a little bit about what are the things, some areas of expertise that you could you could do if somebody called up and said, Hey, I like the guy that kept saying bro a lot on yeah. the show and I want to talk to him. What are the things that you have that, that, that you can, you know, yeah. help people with? So, you know, whenever we're, we're very particular on what markets that we enter into, we like to be considered somewhat of an expert, um, you know, to say the least, like, you know, we kill it in the rental industry. So uh, slingshot rentals, boat rentals, side by side rentals, which I've owned a couple of those companies myself. So, you know, we're just extra good at it. But, you know, whenever we first meet a company, um, we do a discovery and insight session. So whenever we do that, we we need to know your what you do and your brand like you do. And so I think where we add a lot of value is I kind of already know. You know, I know if I wanted to go set up like a shed lot tomorrow, I could pull it off. Like uh-huh. I know the people to do it. I know the RTO companies. I know the owners of the RTO companies. You know, it's just understanding. I've got buddies who sold them, you know, uh-huh. multiple. Marketing. Yeah, marketing, all that yeah. stuff. So I, I, the main point is that there's not – so many questions to where we already uh, totally understand um the industry and uh you know even hanging out with you i mean you know i think in the last month i've at least clocked 12 hours of you telling me (laughs) about the shed industry right that's just not normal for most people outside of the shed industry so um but yeah i mean ultimately ma'am our we do quite a quite a few things, but um, you know our bread and butter is definitely video production. Mm-hmm. I think just the amount of passion within our whole team um, that's always going to be there. But man, just from the the brands you know that I've launched personally. Um, and then the relationships that I've built with business owners through time, we started doing a bunch of, you know, website, web design. Uh, now we got a whole team that does that, um, logos and graphic design. Got a um, new logo coming out soon. That, that, oh, that, yeah. yeah. Oh, can we talk about, about it? Talk about it. Yeah, yeah okay. So it. shed life, yeah? yeah. No, shed life. Not salt life. Right. Shed life. Right. You think that would go well? Man, I think it would go well. I yeah. think uh, you hear people mention the shed life all the time. Whenever you're involved in this industry, whether you're hauling, whether you're selling, whether you're building, you know, suppliers of the industry, all the way from – RTO to services yep. like 3D, lumber, yep. whatever it is, you know, I mean, you kind of engage. There, there's some hardcore folks out there. I mean, the 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 up to 1,000 listeners a week that listen to this, I would make the argument they're living the shed life. I yeah. mean, they, they're shed geeks themselves. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Like, they, they're all in. So Yeah. No, I think, and actually, just to be transparent, we were literally just designing the logo, I think, <laughs> right before we walked in here. So just kind of, that was cool. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so and beyond that, kind of our other uh, specialties are Google and Meta ads. Um, so Meta meaning Facebook and Instagram. Um, you know, it seems like a very traditional way for you know portable sales guys is you know just constantly sharing stuff, sharing it in groups. But um, uh, w- the way that we would go about it, see, the good thing about Google ads is that you know if you have a product you're selling, especially a shed, um, it's very important that uh, that the person searching for it in your area that you pop up first on Google or very close to it, that just shows uh, the impact of like your credibility, right? Sure. Um, so they know, you know, your credentials are solid if you're on top of Google. Um, and then, you know, helping people build reviews. But at the same time, the same thing like Facebook, um, mostly Facebook, some Instagram. Instagram does well in big cities, but like in our rural area, it's more like we just look at other brands and um, people on a national level, level like icons and things, but it, it still does well. Um, but Facebook ads, man, is a little bit different. So the difference between Google ads and Facebook ads, when Google ads are cost a little bit more because uh, they're looking for what you have to offer. Uh-huh. It's called a warm or a hot lead, right? Facebook starts off at a cold with a cold lead, and then generally you have to remarket to those people, which is very easy to do. So when people get on Facebook, they're not scrolling the news feed to be sold to. They're trying to see what Uncle Buck ate for dog on lunch, you know, <laughs> the weirdest stuff, you know. We don't even know, right? I don't even think we know what we get on Facebook for anymore, right? I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't. 
Like, uh, yeah. I, I use it because it's business. Sure. But outside of that, I mean, I don't know that I would be on Facebook. Yeah. You yeah. know? I mean, yeah. but it's such a, it's such a uh, imperative business. It is. Like, tool at this point. There's, there's, it's almost, it's 75% business, 25% personal at this sure. point. And when I started in 09 with an account, it was 100% personal, zero yeah. business. Yeah. But you see the value in being able to reach people yeah. through those platforms. I mean, absolutely. TikTok, LinkedIn. I mean, there's so many of these yeah. other opportunities, you know, YouTube, uh, creating yeah. a channel. What advice would you give to like a shed salesperson or a, a shed manufacturing company that's like, mm. hey, how do we have a little bit more of a presence? Yeah, absolutely. So number one, yeah, definitely always running Google ads in whatever areas that you deliver sheds to or sell sheds to. But I think the most important thing is definitely branding. Um, our specialty is, is branding videos. So uh, I, I don't know, I guess we posted a link for on here of the summit uh, portal oh, yeah, building yeah, video. Yeah. But like that is a branding video. We're not, we're not trying to sell a shed. We're showing folks, what can you do with these sheds? Right. That was just one simple, simple way. Um, but a branding video is showing who the brand is, like the behind of the brand, the the who, the what, the family, how's it started, uh-huh. the passion. Uh-huh. That needs to really be running all the time. Um, not when not when sales are down, but all the time, right? Does Coca-Cola really need to like do any marketing right it's top of mind advertising yeah man do you think like jake from state farm like they're not struggling right or the lizard (laughs) from geico you know they're just not so i think that's a gecko from geico is it a gecko well yeah (laughs) hopefully the the categorizes a lizard still for my my sake um but yeah so you know it's just constantly staying top of mind and being more um you know than just shed sales right sure Yeah. yeah you could be sitting at a an office every day, all day, you know, and the way I saw like shed sales whenever I came into it was like, if you can connect with your customers, um, obviously you're going to sell. If you can build trust, you're going to sell. Um, so what's, what's some of your big like categories? Like if you start to market to people, um, a lot of people will say, you know, the average buyers, uh, you know, 40 or 50 plus, you know, woman, or maybe it's a 50 plus man, but how many, who do you have selling to them? It's maybe say like a 50 plus year old man. Um, and he knows construction. Yeah. Maybe he has a general idea, but what he really is, is he's this cool cat laid back. Awesome dude. Yeah. That just like you come in and he's not going to be maybe high pressure, but he's going to yeah. educate you. Sure. Uh, he's not excited to sell, but he's yeah. going to sell something cause he's there and he can put the time in. Yeah. Um, but then you have like this new category of buyers You know what I'm saying? That may not, they may not understand there may be a disparity between them in terms of the way they buy and sell, especially something like post COVID. Um, Take a look at websites, shopping millennials, the way they go on, the way they search for something. They want to get as much information as they can before they get there to minimize the amount of time that they're spending there trying to buy this, right? Yeah, trying to go pre-educated. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's that's constantly the way that we see things moving. Sheds are not immune to that, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, What about video? What would you, what would you do to like tell a manufacturing company? I mean, you specialize in video, you make good, quiet, uh, high quality videos. I got this gimbal. I bought this gimbal. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I have no idea. Like I I see you out there with this gimbal and it's like turning on this axis and I'm like, man, that's really cool. You were the one that taught me about Boca. It wasn't Boca. Boca. Yeah. I still remember. Smooth buttery Boca. (laughs) Yeah. Which there's probably not a lot in this video, but it's like, you know, when our depth of field, it's like everything within this line is sharp and everything else is blurred out. So kind of mostly you see in videos or a lot of branding videos. Boca, yeah. It's Boca, I remember. Blurry background. I remember it, dude. I yeah. remember you telling me about it. But there's there's manufacturing companies that might not understand that, or maybe they don't want to hire mm-hmm. a professional to be on the team all the time, but maybe they want to get out there through Instagram, through sure. TikTok, you know, visual, yep. visual yep. opportunities as opposed to just text. Um, yeah. What, what, do you, what advice do you give them, man? Like, where should they go? What's the best thing to do if you're a manufacturing company you want to – yeah. Hire, hire Dillon Street. Is yeah. that what they do? Are you a shed manufacturer, dealer, or hauler looking for a trusted resource to build or upgrade your website? Do you need a simple business website or a more robust and dynamic e-commerce site? 
Are you looking for an affordable option with digital marketing solutions for your small business? Are you looking for paid ads using Google search engines or social media platforms to reach a new audience? If you answered yes to any of these questions, it's time to check out Troyer Websites of Texas. Did you know that 46% of the 5.6 billion searches made each day are for local businesses? At Troyer's, our SEO strategies will help you get on the first page of search results for your shed business. At Troyer Websites of Texas, you will be sure to get five-star customer service with proficiency and skill. Troyer Websites just launched their managed digital services to incorporate all your marketing needs into a single dashboard. Here at the Shed Geek Podcast, we trusted the team at Troyer Websites of Texas to develop our website, and we couldn't be happier with the results. To know more or schedule a discovery call, simply contact the Shed Geek at 618-309-3648 or email info at shedgeek.com. Well, so, gosh, I think if you look at the giants in each individual category of business and you, if you just, like, analyze and monitor their brand, they all do the similar same things Uh um and then you have you know just kind of sub bar subpar companies but like it it just depends on how how big you're trying to grow like some you know some business owners may not want to be national you know maybe they just want to be in their part of the state and get their piece of the pie um so that depends but i'd say if we're talking to um uh you know manufacturers absolutely it's like your brand presence and um just being being more than just shed sales, I really, I really oh. think that that's going to be uh, the key. So just having having more to offer, and then a lot of it just comes down to you know relationships um, and your team and your culture and all those different things. But like, gosh, man, I, I honestly would say if you're just wanting to get out there, we have a pretty simple. Um, structure kind of check out your branding what you look like what you feel like Uh you know you your logo is your first impression and Uh you really don't get Uh a second chance right so we kind of just start there look at your colors look at your website does everything look cohesive Uh, where are you ranking at on google Uh, how can you get that up and then um, to further capture audience and like get followers and more eyes on you uh, numbers or credibility so like how many mm-hmm. reviews do you have how many followers on facebook do you got i'm not mm-hmm. saying that that's not shallow uh, it, you know i don't you consider it what you want but like if, if you want to be on top you've got to be on top and those are some things that it takes now what do you have to do behind that is constant marketing constant brand awareness there's so many ways to do it i guarantee you just watch somebody some leader of uh, the shed industry you're going to see their ads on tiktok soon Uh or on snapchat soon Uh somebody's going to do it Uh and they're going to be there and there's an odd range of folks on tiktok right Right. i mean i know my dad's on it dude's like 58 (laughs) right he's on tiktok though and um uh, you know, the more you follow these people around showing your sheds or what your sheds can be used for, um, that's it. And, and sometimes you just need to try different avenues, you know? No, for sure. Um, you've set on a, a, a sales lot. I mean, you were there taking care of like your dream, launching your dream. Um, what yeah. did, what advice or what did you take away from setting there in a lot? I'm out here, right. Traveling all over the country and, sure. and you're like, Hey bro, I got you. I'm going to sell some sheds while you're gone. That's right. How did that feel? Uh, what was your experience in that when it, at the time that you were doing that? Well, I'll tell you this, it was much different than you. So <laughs> Shannon sold sheds in a very weird way. He would <laughs> go ahead. No, you you're, you're <laughs> Yeah, it's it's this is this is unedited now. I'm yeah. interested. I'm all in. So you're, you're committed too far. You know, I'm in the left side of this building. What was it like a 16 by 48, yeah. something Six, like that? Yeah, 16 by 40. I'm on yeah. the left side. I got like a I don't know, uh, 14 by you know, 16 by 12 foot little you know square, and I can always kind of hear what's going on. And um, Shannon would become like this life management partner or this financial (laughs) manager you know because some people that came they don't really care you know they've got the money that it takes to put down to get it now and shannon's like well do you you know long story short do you really need to be doing this you know (laughs) like i don't know so so for me money management is an important thing because i mean i mean just straight up i mean we didn't grow up with a lot of money i mean i know it was like for bill collectors to be calling and a wolf at the door you know Mm -hmm. and and uh and and for me and i even worked a small time in like 
in like uh, trying to be a financial advisor. And I realized that it was more yeah. for my own personal experience than it was for me. But it's, it's just, um, I think my work is always a form of ministry. So if I sell in sheds, it was mm-hmm. like ministry. We might pray for somebody when they come on the lot, sure. right? And not yeah, try to sure. sell them anything and sure. move on. But that's what God tasked you with at the moment <laughs> of that day. Um, so for me, it's like when you see a young couple come in and they're asking questions and you can tell they're uninformed. Um, it's, it's like, it was my job yeah. to really make sure they understood. I mean, how many times did you hear me say like, man, I don't think this customer's right for this, Yeah. but you know, at the point of, of, of like really facing some, some serious like backlash from them, Yeah. uh, it would get to the point where I would say, okay, moving on, you met the criteria, let's go. But, mm-hmm. um, it was important for me to yeah. be like, I want to make sure you know everything that you could possibly know. So I, I oversold sure. many times. I think my favorite was, I, I might've heard you giggle uh, in the office one time when I was trying to sell to a guy, I was exhausted. It was like a three hour sale and this guy's trying to get a, 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 a little bit of money off or whatever on it. And I just remember at one point he finally asked me, he said, okay, well, would you give me a discount because, uh, oh. because I served in the military? Yeah. And I said, would you pray, would you play, uh, would you, uh, pay full price because I served in the military um, and I think I heard you giggle. <laughs> well, you know, man, this, su- that particular subject, I, uh, did I tell you the story about the, or me messaging the corporate or- Oreos corporate headquarters? I tell you, you did, but I share did. it. Go ahead. Yeah. So I had a, um, it ha- ha- had another company just sold it and um a guy you know he'd been there a couple of times and he was like hey um i'm gonna doing my third one can you give me a di- what kind of discount can you give me and um so it just made me think is like i don't know man i've got this odd thing but it's like i feel like your closest family and friends um should not be asking you for a discount especially if you're a small business like right. they should support you in your fullness whatever you're asking Give that to them, plus doggone tip them. That's what I do. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. if I go out to eat, and there's a waitress I know that's, you know, working hard. I don't even care if she's working hard. I will tip her well regardless. But so anyway, it just, it just frustrates me, um, you know, when people – but, like, if you go to Walmart, you can't, you know, I've been here nine times. I've been to Dollar General nine times this week, which is probably true in my life. I go all the time. <laughs> it's like they're not giving me a discount, bro. Buying Oreos? No. Well, so the, so the Oreos, I doggone, um, I emailed the corporate headquarters that deals with, um, like, uh, not public relations, but um, uh, whenever they, they'll support different causes. And I was like, hey, oh, gosh, if we could, I'd throw up the, the email right here. But ultimately, in a nutshell, I said, um, hey, I'm, I'm probably about to buy, give or take, my 500th um, birthday cake Oreo. I'm your biggest fan, yada, yada, yada. And I said, would you send me some free Oreos? And they messed me up. They're like, absolutely not. <laughs> They're not <laughs> going to do that. No, sir. Yeah, but it's like, you know, but but then everyone else, just because they get to talk to the owner who has to play the roles of the sales guy or whatever, you know, it's like, oh, oh I know him. I can add it. It just frustrates me. I don't like it. I don't no, like I, it. I had, I mean, I experienced it. Uh, one of the worst customers I ever I ever had was a, was a pastor, mm. you know, uh, um, and I'm not trying to just throw shade on that. I'm just, it was an expectation that it was like, wow, he had really, uh, yeah, we had some connection and it was like, man, that yeah. was, that was a hard, that was a hard thing to deal with. I think, uh, I think I had a sale the week after he bought, we didn't know he was going to have a sale and he actually yeah. hit me back up and said, can I get a refund for the difference in the, in the sale? And I, I, I was amazed. I was like, man, I'm, I'm over here trying to make it. I was excited to get the sale. I, I yeah. think I lost money on it by the time it was done. And I'm like, this isn't even worth it. Yeah. Family and friends sometimes are the hardest to please in mm. sales for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, I just got to the point where I almost didn't want to sell to them. That's right. You know, it, yeah. it would be because their expectation was so, was so high. Yeah. Um, it's good to have some divide Yeah. in there. Uh, man, I think what you do is really cool. Um, you're starting a new adventure. You want to yep. talk about that? I mean, you're yeah. So, so uh, if we, as we go back into like the 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 story of how I got into video production, I always just kind of considered myself a freelance videographer till I learned all these other things. I start building my own websites, then friends and family's websites, then people I've done videos for websites, and so um, you know, and then 
gosh, logos and graphics, and I start running my own ads, then my buddies, then my friends. So uh, we, we've we slowly and oddly, um, Dillon Street Cine- Cinema um, has – has been video production, but on the back end, we're doing a lot more other stuff that we don't even advertise, right? We don't, we don't even have the capacity. So, sure. um, yeah, so we're, we're launching a new brand and separating the two. Um, so we're, we're pretty heavy into the wedding film industry. Uh-huh. I mean, we're booked up. We've got bookings in 2024 already. So, nice. like, we're, we're so deep in the wedding film industry that – you can't get out unless you just want to refund a bunch of money. You, you, you're in it. Yeah. So, so Dillon Street Cinema is going to stay wedding film exclusive, um, and then we're launching uh, this new company called Gorilla Marketing, and um, I like the name. Yeah, That's gr- cool. Yeah, Gorilla Marketing is G U E R R I L L A. So um, we're really really excited, um, and yeah, I mean ultimately it's kind of from from front to front to end. We figure out who you are, what you do, you know, we get your colors, and man, everything plays such a part, you're, the colors in your logo, like I see you got Mr. Matt Black's yes, building sir. on, you know, <laughs> all these colors make you feel different things, and it's very important, yeah. depending on your vision statement, and all those things on, like, what you want to look like, and feel like, and your first impression to be, um, it's all super important, so generally from that, you know, we make sure your 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 web design is all good, fully functional, social media, um, um, and, um, yeah, I'll get into the branding and the videos and the ads and all that stuff and just keep it rolling all the time. So um, we've had – we've been running ads for the same companies for years, man, so years. Yeah. I mean, years. Oh, you've been killing it, dude, man. <laughs> I've I've appreciated, like, watching you, learning from you. I'm telling you, i got to bring this gimbal over and have mm-hmm. you show me what I'm doing. I don't even know what's up here. Yeah. I'm, I'm – this thing's twisting all around, and I thought I broke it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they do. They got to be perfectly balanced. Yeah, it's like 160 bucks. And I'm like, I already broke it as it, soon as it, I took it out. This of must box. be like a cell phone gimbal. Is that what you're talking? No, no. no this it's is, a real it's deal. Kind of like, yeah, it's like what you got in your office. Okay. Yeah, man. Okay. Big time at Shed Geek That's podcast. Right. You know? That's right. Yeah. Hello, Shed Builder. This is the Shed Geek here to tell you about one of the coolest things I've seen. The first of its kind, the Joey Pivot Lift. I have visited hundreds of shed manufacturing shops across the country. And one of the first things shop owners and shed builders mention is the amount of fatigue that is placed on the everyday builder. If you own a shed shop, you know that your builder is an asset to your future. With the Joey Lift, you'll see more production and your builder will appreciate you investing in their well-being by replacing the thousands of steps they have to take up and down a ladder all day. The Joey Lift is perfect for shed builders, roofers, painters, and laborers working to add that special layer of detail on your shed. It's so easy, even a geek can drive it. We go big. Uh, Yeah. uh, I kind of want to give the, like, one of the cool things about doing the podcast is it's very shed industry related, right? Mm-hmm. It's shed heavy on almost everything. But what in my life at this point is not shed related? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, at some point, I looking, thought you were asking me. No, I was no, like, no, yeah, no, you I'm got nothing, bro. The, the, the <laughs> connections, the connections I have at this point somehow sure. stem if they're not from the shed industry, they go into that industry or whatever. But I really like the personal aspect of it. Whenever I get a chance to interview people that sure. talk about second and third generation, um, you know, um, just how they started in sales, went on to something mm. else, uh, maybe how they started as a builder and sure. then they wanted to go out and branch out and be a builder of their own. And really, I think that most people really have the desire to do that no matter what. I, you know, there's a saying that says uh, leaders create more leaders. They don't create followers, right? Yeah. So like you always try to, put into people who can, and if they go beyond what you do, great. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Um, I guess where I'm going with this is like listening to their personal story, their personal brand. I think that people buy, when you talk about branding, I think that people buy from people that they, they trust. Sure. And I think that one of the things I was attempting to do, even whenever I sold was to build trust. And sometimes yeah. you got a very impulsive customer there and they're there for five minutes or the, yeah. they, I mean, they hit the door and they're like, Hey, guy down the street got yep. this and it's this much can you beat it yeah and it's like uh you know sometimes it's just easier to be like hey bro we can't beat that yeah you know you should yeah. go buy from, from them because like your your senses are almost telling you already like this yeah. dude is going to be a handful I'll, I'll, I'll try to sell him something if he 
comes in and sure. settles down and gives me a chance to, but if he's just looking for that quick boom, boom, whatever, there's no relationship. That's not me. Yeah. Like I, I don't ever sell anything. I build a relationship and then sales happen because I build a relationship. Yeah. yeah. So, so I guess what I'm saying is I think that people buy from people they trust, people they know. Mm -hmm. That's the cool thing about the podcast is you get a chance to tell who you are. If you're yeah. a company and you come on talking about your marketing, yeah. if you're a company and you come on talking about your rent to own or whatever it is, your, your, your 3D design, what, whatever you're doing. Sure. Um, I think that people hear you get to know your story and then they watch you and then they, they figure out who they want to work with or yeah. purchase something from. Yeah. Your story goes back. Your story is one of my favorite. Um, Tell a little bit about like your personal story. Um, oh, that's a story. Yeah, bring it, man. Like, like oof, I've got I've got many different links and versions of the story. I don't <laughs> I don't know which one we we want to go into here. Go, go with what you feel led, man. Oh man, well, yeah. So so I grew born and raised in Metropolis, um, born in Paducah. Um, lived in Metropolis my whole life. And I would say that like the first 11, 12 years of my life was probably as good as pretty standard, probably lower to middle class, um, mm -hmm. really low. And then they kind of grew to middle class as my dad got into construction. So, um, man, my, my family was together. We lived together. It was pretty sweet. Had both of our grandparents. I mean, um, I was a little bit of a ruffian, but man, most kids are just yeah. a little, little boys are just a little bit wild. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I literally have no complaints. I would even say all the way up till probably my 10 to 13 were the golden years. I got into racing dirt bikes and me and my dad, my family did it every weekend. And it was just so memorable. It's just really, I, I grew up in an awesome family. I was a probably C to D student. My brother, my older brother, my older sister, they were straight A students. So I was always a little bit off, you know, off the uh, standard, you know, that our kind of family had created along the way, but not too far off, you know. I get you. Uh, so, so beyond that, man, I think it all started going downhill. Is um, long story short, my parents got a divorce, and um, in that divorce, you know, they sold the house, and Dad already he worked out of down quite a bit, maybe a week or two out of the month. Um, so he's going doing these, you know, higher paying out of town jobs. Got so much, you know, a crisis going on at home. You know how men get sometimes we yep, just yep, like to yep. escape, right? So <clears throat> my mom moved to town. She's general manager at Dillard's in Paducah. Um, she's working 50, 60 hours a week. So so the summer of my eighth grade year, I go in from the, living in the country my whole life to living in a metropolis in town with no supervision, um, you know, nothing, and then going into high school. And ultimately, gosh, I went downhill. Um, and within probably a year of, 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 you know, doing my first drug or smoking weed, um, I'm selling it. Um, and quickly get hooked on prescription pills. Um, got a girlfriend who was a senior. I'm a freshman. She's doing cocaine, so I'm doing cocaine. I mean, I have no idea. I, like, I think back to my mentality then. It's like, I'm sure you can too. We thought we were like grown, like you sure. know. Oh yeah. And man. I look at yeah. kids now, and I that that act like they're grown, and I look at them and I'm like, man, bro, you you're a, a baby to yeah, kid. You have no to, idea what's ahead of you. No, you really don't. Yeah. So. Man, my life really started going downhill um, at that point. I just went a whole uh, different way, man. So I was like the product of a Eminem Slim Shady album, right? This yeah. is like, really, I don't know yeah. any other way to explain it. Um, yeah, so you, gosh, man, I just get so steeped in it. Prescription pills, selling weed, you know, selling drugs, all this stuff, man. And uh, I, you know, short version, I didn't shake this free until... Um, I was 24 years old, you know, in and out of jail and institutions. Um, but my last kind of hoorah, um, at this point, I'd had a, a wife and I had my first daughter. My, my last hoorah, I was in Springfield, Missouri. We had this, you know, tragic situation I got involved in that I shouldn't have been. We moved back home, and then uh, we thought it would get better at that point, but it honestly didn't, man. I kind of went deeper and deeper into this black pit, and I was like, well, we're around family now, so I don't need to stay close to my wife. You know, she'll be around type of thing, and I didn't have that same feeling when it, we were alone um, in the city. We didn't have family, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, so uh -huh. I always stayed quite a bit closer, but then just kind of left them behind. And, um, yeah, so I, I went on the longest um, police chase of Southern Illinois history at 56 miles, um, got caught, ended up going to jail, and um, 
it, it goes even worse in jail. Just stuff I'm, I'm just not even really sure. going to get raw and talk <laughs> about. But long story short, man, my mom bonded me out for five grand. And um, I went to Teen Challenge, which is, um, you, know, you know exactly what it is, but yep, it's a 14 yep. month Christian rehab program. Um, and believe it or not, I was, I, I did well when I got there, you know, did excelled ex- exceedingly did well, became the head cook within like two or three weeks, which you usually didn't get it until you were four or six months in. Um, and this was up in St. Louis. Um, but man, through, through that, I ended up getting in a fight with a buddy up there. He was actually probably my closest friend in that month and a half's time. And I ended up getting in a kind of a fight. Then we got in trouble and they gave us this punishment. And then we looked at each other and we're like, well, we're leaving. So this is a month and a half in. It was actually December 29th, 2014 is the day we decided to leave. And he's like, he's from St. Louis. So we're going to go do some drugs and just get back at it, right? So they, they pack all your stuff, your suitcases, your blankets, everything. They drive you far enough to where you can't walk back. So we go 10 miles to this McDonald's. They drop you off. I remember hiding all my stuff behind this fence, um, kind of close to this clothes business. Uh, I go, <clears throat> uh, I beg my dad to come. I call him from McDonald's, beg him to come. They have to give you, leave you a little money. So they gave me a $20 bill. I go to a gas station, buy a pack of cigarettes, and I would smoked cigarettes for probably nine years at that point. And um, I remember smoking a cigarette, and I remember looking down at that pack of cigarettes, and I just had this thought. I was like, man, if I smoke this whole pack of cigarettes, every addiction, every old addiction that had a grip on me in my life is going to come with it, whether it's the women, the drugs, you know, just all the things. So probably the manliest thing I ever did in my life is I threw a whole pack of cigarettes away, the whole thing. And... um, Something in me, you know, changed, and, you know, I don't know how you talk about it on, on the show or whatever, but, you know, at that mom- moment, you know, Christians would consider was repentance or, you know, getting getting saved, so to speak. Hey, Ed. Um, yeah, so so in that point, you know, that happened, and um, that was the moment that I would say that I uh, changed my life. I was going this way, and I turned around, uh-huh. and I went the other way, right? Uh-huh. Um, and from there, gosh, I think the best thing that happened to me is I got locked in an apartment with no job, and all I had was YouTube, and I got in the Word, and uh, that's really probably the moment that, that my life transformed the most. And, man, I've just never looked back from that point. You know, not everybody's story is is going to relate. Not everybody's going to understand. No. Like I, I, I didn't go. I would say as deep as what you went in in uh, several areas. But man, I I certainly remember what it was like to have older, like an older brother, older cousins. Everybody was older. Yeah, all the things they were doing were things that you you know. Even when, we we went to church, but it was like I, this rebelliousness that just. Sure uh resonated inside of me you know what i mean it was it was it was just trying to get out right and uh you know to this day i mean in my opinion to this day those there's things that i still fight yeah you know that are that are real absolutely real things i'm just not perfect i mean i bust bust everybody's bubble right now i'm just not perfect you know never have been and and probably never will be it's a constant struggle for me it's a daily struggle you know to try to figure things out um, and mess up along the way, but mm-hmm. still always taking a step in progress. As bad as the step looks that you went back, yeah. Judas is kiss himself. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? God invited him. You know what I mean? Jesus invited him to suffer. Sure. You know what I mean? Like yep. it's so I understand what it's like to go through those struggles, but then to still move forward, man, yeah. not to your level. Yours has always been like one of my favorite stories. I remember inviting you to speak at the teen challenge banquet that we put together, man, yeah. you did like the spoken word that yeah. was really cool. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are not going to be, be uh, down with this, but I mean, you rap, it's a clean, yeah. it's a very clean, motivating. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I don't even do it. I just do it because I like it. <laughs> Dude, you I just love it. Yeah, but you yeah. do a good job at it. Thanks, and, and even if you're humble on it, I'm going to say that because uh, openly, uh, publicly, man, I think it's cool. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I mm-hmm. get it. It's not what everybody uh it's not the something that they they desire but dude your your lifestyle has led you to that you're a, you're a story of redemption you're a yeah. story of no what doubt. god's grace gives and not every sure. not everybody gets to experience not getting god's grace sure. not, not everybody's perfect people like me and you we know what it's like to yeah. experience his grace because yeah. there's so much i mean there's so much bad that's within us yeah man if it wasn't for him you know? Yeah, man. And for me, someone like me, I've got a, an addictive personality. I just become 
all consumed by whatever I'm into at that time, right? So it's very important for me that um, my days are well taken up. I don't have idle time at all. My weekends, not at all. Everything's planned and structured. Uh, pretty well know what I'm doing every day, keeping close accountability between me and my, my team, uh, making sure the culture is good. Um, gosh, man, I don't, I don't bring my computer home from work. I, c- I come home and I'm home. Um, and I'm just there, just trying Big to be family present. Guy. Yeah, Big heck family yeah. guy, man. Absolutely. I constantly see you posting stuff. You were, you know, I was going to say earlier when you were talking about the waitress uh, thing on tip and like you were mm-hmm. Mr. Beast before Mr. Beast was even uh, around, right? You were I don't throwing, know about that. You were throwing hundred dollar tips out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trying to make people's day. And There, uh, there was a time, um, there was a time that I, I heard this story. It was a pastor and he went to eat with another pastor who was visiting and they go to this little small kind of bar and grill steak joint or whatever. And uh, the waitress was just terrible, like terrible, didn't refill their drinks, food uh-huh. was cold bad Uh and uh they were about to leave and the 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 pastor that i knew or that was telling the story he left a hundred dollar tip and the other pastor like what are you doing man like they don't deserve that yeah they don't (laughs) they don't deserve that and he looked at him he said if you got what you deserved you go to hell and i was like wow so so from that point um you know, me and my wife, we used to tip the bill. So we used to not go out to eat as much. But if the bill was $80, we tipped $80. We did that, you know, did that for a long time. And uh, uh, still to me, I think very hard when I'm about to eat and what I'm going to tip, you know. It just, I don't know, it's, it's important it's one to of, me. Yeah, it's one of those things, man. Yep. Um, who's got the coolest cars? You or Matt Black? Well, Matt, <laughs> well, hold on here. Now, Matt Black just ordered a truck that I don't think he's got yet that has the any level lift. I'm pretty sure he doesn't have it did, yet. No, he doesn't have it yet. Yeah. Did, did he tell you what happened? No. Uh, he got another truck, and, and they were going to, like, he's waiting on that one. And yeah. they said, here, you can drive this one for six months, and we'll okay. just buy it back. At, I'm telling all his business, ain't it? Yeah. We'll, we'll buy it back at cost. Uh, yeah. He got, he got T-boned within 24 hours oh, on no. that truck. So he's still waiting on his other. But go go ahead while, while I'm telling all his business. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that my cars are cooler, so I don't know. Oh, that's it. There that's we all go. I got. <laughs> They're throwing down the gauntlet, yeah. Matthew Black. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I did ride. I went out to the Shed Expo and got to ride around with him in a Corvette, and that was kind of cool. Huh. Kind of fun. Peasant car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are fun, and, you know, hey, sometimes it's it's cool to enjoy life, man. I don't think that God's yeah. uh you know, I don't. I don't think that uh, he asked yeah. us to not have a sense of humor. I don't yeah. think he asked us to not laugh. Yeah, that's just me. That's how I'm yeah. gonna live. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I, I, you're you're one of those guys that you know your energy is infectious. The people that you're around, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> you just been I waiting. was waiting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you've been waiting to do that, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. All right. But you used to work with your brother. Dude, there's so many cool things. I know people say, was this about the shed industry? Absolutely it is, bro. There, there's, there's so many people that I've known that I've talked to, mm-hmm. even in this industry, that I will not call out because it would be completely ridiculous that have told me about struggles and, and just conversations that yeah. we've had. Trust me, it doesn't matter uh, where. That's real life. Like you said, the town we live in, absolutely mm-hmm. terrible, terrible yeah. drug problem and um, all you can do is uh, your part to help. Maybe that's just one that's person right. a day. Uh, man, right. I, I love your story, dude. I, I I loved watching you from when you were logging to going into yeah. video. Yeah, like always cool stuff. My my son always likes your ve- vehicles. <laughs> um, he's always uh, you know like Dylan Street and been like you know you're like that. You lead people whenever you do stuff mm. like that. You know what I mean? Me and you have a little bit of enough age yeah. disparity between us that sure. uh, you're somewhere between me and him so he he would look yeah. up to something well man like that. I, I don't even notice man because like when you're laser focused on your life and what you're doing you really i can't say that it's not that i don't care about yeah. like my reputation or what people think about me but i certainly don't have time to monitor it or no i mean my day to day is very similar and i hear some cool stories about how you know you've done this or that but like it's, I don't know, it's, it's really not about that. That's good, yeah. but I always wonder why Jesus asked the question, um, you know, 
who do you say that I am and who do they say that I am? You know what I mean? Uh, that always interests me. Sometimes I want to know, but I think that if you're so focused on what you're doing, not about necessarily your reputation, but if you do everything with integrity and character in business or whatever it is that, um, it just follows you, you yeah. know? Yeah. No, dude, I, I love it. Love watching the story. I, I certainly love that we've been able to connect again and kind of yeah. uh, anything that I can do to, to lead people your way. If people want to see this video, we'll try to throw it on. Uh, but other videos that you do, where do they find you? Where, where would they go to know more about you? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, when what day is this going to air, do you know? Oh, man. Like, I've got probably like eight or nine in the queue right now. And oh, like another eight or nine scheduled. So okay. it's, it's really... Um, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't wish know. I could tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so if you got anyone in your family that's about to get married or you got a kid, go to DylanStreetCinema.com. Uh, it's D-Y-L-A-N, street like you drive on, cinema.com. Uh, for business needs, uh, you go to GorillaFirm.com, G-U-E-R-R-I-L-L-A, firm.com um so yeah you can you can reach us on there feel free to follow my my personal facebook page um yeah i absolutely connect with anybody absolutely if they uh if they want to know more about you all mm-hmm. they got to do is reach out sure i'll get them in touch with you man i wish you nothing but absolute success there's so much uh marketing that's specific to the shed industry that's sort of sure uh on on par right now uh man even though you uh reach a broad range yeah i've seen your work Love what you do and uh, promote you in any way that I can. Sure. Really appreciate getting to know you. We actually, we, we live like right down the street from each other yeah. now. No, yeah, right down the like street. Right down the yeah. street. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy how things work out. Yeah. Man, I wish you like tons of luck. I just hope you continue to have success. Love watching your videos. I'm going to buy some of your daughter's art at some point. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the right thing to the come right up. The right thing. Hmm, uh, I could probably make that happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell her tell her I'm, I'm, I'm buying for sure yeah. once I see the right thing. And uh just appreciate getting to know you, man. Sure. Uh, love talking about God here on the on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's not just always about shed. Sometimes that's about something bigger. Uh, yeah. But prayer is a big thing for us here. Do you care to like pray over the industry or just sort of yeah, over any no. listeners today? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, yeah. So, Lord, we just uh, we come to you right now, Lord, uh, humble in your presence, Lord. We just want to. Um, Gosh, man, pray pray for favor uh, for Shannon and uh, the Shed Geeks and his family and his team, but also anyone that's connected to Shannon um, and over the whole industry. Um, hopefully everybody can, I don't know, just um, help each other out and um, help push push people forward, um, not keep people down. Uh, Father, we just, we just thank you for who you are. Uh, we love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah. Really, really, really been looking forward to this. Yeah. All right.